Welcome back, everyone. This is the Prepared Mindset Podcast. I'm your host, Austin. And guys, man, it's getting crazy out here. I'm telling you, uh, everything going on between Iran and Israel, things continue to heat up and escalate. Our governmental leadership continues to do nothing about it, it seems. Um, and then somebody just sent me, uh, as I'm sitting down to like record the intro in the ad space here, that uh, there's indications that Iran is now weeks away from a nuclear weapon, which is obviously gravely concerning given um, their propensity to violence and the, what I'll say is like the global concern about any super, any world superpower or actually really any nation having nuclear arms. It's not a good thing. It's something that we obviously are all very uh, opposed to for pretty, pretty obvious reasons. Nuclear warfare has a lot of side effects. Um, it, it can very sorely damage the planet and the environment. And uh, there's a reason why we've deployed nuclear weapons like once or, or technically twice in history with Hiroshima and Nagasaki, right? Th those are atomic bombs, right? And uh, why we, we haven't really, you know, gone back to that since then, because it is such a bad idea, even in the most, um, I guess the most awful of circumstances, it is one of those things you just do not want to do and, and should not do. Uh, and, and yet we still have powers in this country, in, in this planet, I should say, this country on this planet that pursue such power. And who knows to what end we'll see. Uh, there's only so much that we can do, you and I listening to this. Uh, so we'll obviously, you know, we'll talk more about that. But in terms of being a well-prepared citizen, uh, what we can do to be more capable every day, we have a really cool episode lined up this week. Sitting down with Duncan Green once again to talk night vision, you guys. Uh, night vision's great. We had the opportunity, uh, my group that is, to get out and do some CQB training this weekend on a buddy's property in his barn and just some high-level concepts. You know, we have the Orion Training Group class coming up in a couple weeks here that we're all really, really looking forward to. And we wanted to kind of get a head start, introduce some of the base concepts, get everybody working together, flowing together. Uh, at, and again, at a high level, right? Introduce the concepts, talk about problem solving, talk about, you know, creative thinking and the what and the why behind certain decisions and how you actually have more freedom within those scenarios and those situations and people might lead you to believe. And at the end of that, we decided we were going to just give it a go under night vision. It was a drastically, drastically different experience behind the tubes than it was, you know, with the lights on and things like that. But it was cool. It was a very big learning experience for us. And it's one of those reasons why we encourage the ownership of night vision here at Prepared Mindset. So we're going to talk about all kinds of stuff with Duncan. Uh, there's been a lot of changes since the last time he was on. It was about a year ago, honestly, as crazy as that is to say out loud. It's been about a year. Uh, there's been a lot of changes in the market. There's been a lot of changes uh, in capability and access and pricing has gone up, which he talked to us about a year ago and said, yep, you know, prices are going to go up. And at the time we didn't really see it. And they sure as shit, they have gone up probably about, I don't know, four to $700 a unit. Uh, on average, just depending on where you look and things like that, you know, Fatanas PVS 14s and things that were around 24 to $2,700 are now above the $3,000 mark. It's, uh, it's upsetting to see, but that's kind of what happens. We'll probably get into some of that, I'm sure, in this discussion. Um, so it should be very enlightening if, if you're somebody who is just generally interested in night vision and, and wants to know more, or you're just interested in the market because, you're going to be looking to buy your first night vision, whether it's a PVS 14 or a Tonto or whatever have you. Um, so it should be really cool. I always look forward to these kinds of conversations with people who are, you know, true industry experts who have a, uh, some insight, not only on application of skills and products and things like that, but an understanding beyond that, um, you know, and, and can shine some light on the what and the whys that we all experience, at least from a consumer standpoint, because I know as a prepared citizen, and a civilian, that's something that we all have to plan for. And we all have to kind of coordinate around is, you know, where does my paycheck go? How do I, how do I spend this money? What companies produce their products? Where does it make sense for me to spend more to support American made versus, you know, foreign made and things like that. There's a lot of variables, right. That, that go into those conversations. And it's really easy for a lot of people to just sit there and say, buy American every time, no exceptions, but it's, it's easy. But it, if it's, if it's that easy, it's usually not that realistic. So <clears throat> I'm getting to all that good stuff. Um, but want to say thank you to all of our presenting sponsors. Uh, as always, without their support, we wouldn't be able to do 
the stuff that we do. We wouldn't be able to have uh, the training experiences and things that we have. So I want to tell you guys about some of our awesome partners in the industry. And first is Custom Night Vision. Guys, like I said, we're getting into night vision this episode. And if you listen to this and you leave this wanting to know more, want to look at your options, what your budget allows you to access, head on over to Custom Night Vision dot com and check out everything that they have in stock for you so like i was saying whether that's a tonto housing from nocturne or pbs 14 some great single tube options in white phosphor that they have available they have a ton there they even provide images through the hoffman machine of what each tube looks like so you can actually see prior to purchasing what you're lined up to get what it's going to look like if it's going to be one shade of blue versus another if you're going to have any spots or blems in your lens right you can actually see that ahead of just clicking purchase and entering all of your payment information. The guys over at Custom do everything in their power, including an insight chat function, so you can reach out to their sales team to make sure that they give you the most transparent buying experience possible, which is absolutely critical, you guys. There are some real scammers out there in the night vision world. A lot of guys will try to go buy secondhand through you know Facebook Marketplace or Facebook groups or whatever have you, right? And they will get scammed, they will lose money, and it's a it's just a it's a lose lose experience all the way around. Go you know, one more time here. It's customnightvision.com. I implore you guys, go to their website. Check out all the good stuff they have going on. And if you already have night vision, you're just looking to either maybe you're looking to upgrade to some binos, right? You want you've been rocking the mono tube for a while. You want to go to dual tube. I encourage that. That's awesome. They have things like the DTNVSs and the katanas the RNVGs, even these Jerry 31 units that are foreign made that a lot of guys have found very interesting for the capability and the price point. You really want to get into binos. They're a very intriguing, you know, item. Custom has all of this in stock. In addition to helmets from Opscore and Team Wendy, in addition to optics from places like EOTech and Aimpoint and Trigicon, all kinds of good stuff, you guys. Some tremendous dudes over there. Head to customnightvision.com today and up your capability want to also thank say thank you to HRT concept jeez if i can if i can collect my thoughts here and uh and and put this together for a second we're going to go ahead and we're going to try this one one more again HRT tactical gear guys you can head over to hrttacticalgear.com they're great supporters of ours uh they sent me out their AWS handheld light which dropped just shortly after shot show this year a lot of people saw the handhelds they were very interested after seeing the weapon mounted solutions they had you know that rolled out last year and hey we love this we really like the performance we really like the output what are the chances you guys can work this out in a handheld and they did the AWLS series is fantastic great output keeps up with industry leaders and you guys it's it's super convenient it actually has a great cutout in the rear bezel so you can use it with the theorem switchback very very conveniently i actually like it better than the cloud uh handheld that i was running previously which is also a great light but hrt is our buddies they are our sponsors and supporters again it's hrttacticalgear.com and if you guys are looking for plate carriers armor their arc belt series is fantastic they're dropping new pouches uh in may so go head on over to the website check that out and pick yourselves up some new gear today those guys are fantastic and they make some amazing kit also a very big shout out here to lead and steel guys they sent us out the lp1s and the pb3s that's their rifle optic and their pistol optic so otherwise known as the promethean and the pandora and we've been running those pretty pretty heavily over the last couple months since they sent them out i actually had the first opportunity out in a in a real situational environment over this weekend when we were doing night vision training to crank down that lp1 and see how it performed under night vision and outstanding absolutely outstanding the clarity on the dot does not change as you crank it down to the night vision settings and you don't lose it as you looking as you're looking through those tubes uh the, the larger window is fantastic the glass clarity is fantastic i love the lp1 i, I didn't want to but i do it's fantastic um it is pretty much at this point uh taken my heart uh and replaced my my eotex um which are also great but man the lp1 for the money you know the durability and things i think you guys would be pretty hard pressed to find a better solution you guys can head to leadandsteel.co to check out the lp1s and the pandora pistol optics all the great carbines and options solutions right that the team over at lead and steel have for sale and finally here we want to say a very big thank you of course, to 100 Concepts. 100 Concepts has been an outstanding sponsor of ours for a while now, and they make some really, really great products, you guys. You've probably seen their light caps and you've probably seen their scope caps, but they are continuing to develop new and improved solutions. 
improving their website even. So it's easier for you guys to figure out, okay, here is my series of light. Here is my series of scope. What size of cap do I need? What size of shot collar do I need? And they make it a very enjoyable and easy purchasing experience so that things like your scope caps or scope cap pro if you want an anti-reflective device or hex caps if you're running a red dot site right you have an easy way to access the access these and guys really the price point it you can't beat it right now you know it's absolutely incredible the guys over at 100 are doing some outstanding work again it's 100 concepts.com guys check out the website check out all the good stuff they have going on there and throw some support behind your tremendous company doing all the right things folks so big shout out to all of our supporters here, you guys. If you if you skip through the ad space, I really uh, encourage you to go back and listen through those uh, and, and check out those companies, man. Not only do they support us, but typically they, they do a lot of support around the industry and they make some fantastic products. We wouldn't be recommending them to you guys and encouraging you to check them out if that wasn't the case. Now, like I said, this week I'm sitting down with Duncan had this on the books for urban trying to get this on the books for a little bit because uh, night vision is great, man. I love talking about night vision. I love getting into the details and what I'm most looking forward to is understanding some of the industry shifts. There's been new products. There's been some products that have kind of fallen off the market. There's been some changes. There's been, you know, these NNVT tubes that are like gen two plus that people are very fascinated about because they're cheaper. Um, I, I really look forward to breaking it down and cutting it up with Duncan. So, uh, I hope you guys are ready for this one. Should be good. Duncan, how's it going, man? Welcome back. Good to be back. It's been uh, quite some time, but uh, excited yeah. to be here. Yeah, man. Uh, what were we talking about? Is it 15 months or something? 14 months? It, it's it been a hot second for sure. Uh, been a couple hot minutes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe, yeah, yeah. Maybe yeah. a little more than a second. Um, same, same industry, uh, really same career path, uh, just with a different uh, home. Um, so now I'm at U.S. Night Vision, uh, a more tenured uh, company, been around since really almost prior to 2001, um, and uh, new and exciting things for sure. Good for you, man. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's good to be able to sit down and connect. Uh, things are different. <laughs> to say the least, Mary. <laughs> you know, uh, then the last time that we sat and talked, cause I know the last time we talked, I had just a month or two removed from buying my PVS 14. Um, at the time, I don't even think I had mounting hardware yet. I was still like just working on getting everything together, uh, and had zero experience with night vision really hadn't done a lot with it. Um, fast forward now, right? Like we said, 14, whatever months it's however long it's been. Now I have dual tubes. Uh, things are different. Um, the market is... The world is different. <laughs> yeah, everything is crazy. Uh, and, and this is something I'm pretty sure you came out and said the last time we talked is you... that I'm not going to call it a prediction, but you, you said it's like prices are going to go up. We're pulling out of Afghanistan. The war is effectively over because of that, right? We were going to see prices start to climb. And at the time, we really hadn't too much yet, um, but we sure as shit have... Now I know, um, like a, like a photonist PVS 14, right. Which used to be maybe a year ago was what, like a 24 to $2,600 tube. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, and now, now they're pushing in a lot of cases, you know, 3000, 3300. Yeah. Um, and, and that's just the industry as a whole. Um, and, and a lot of options, um, you're really going away from the pre COVID or, or peak COVID pricing, um, where a lot of cheaper options, XLSH from Elbit, uh, 1701 uh, commercial tubes from, from L3, a lot of those were in A, high demand and, and high supply. Mm -hmm. And fast forward, well, the supply chains kind of dried up and pricings reflect uh, not only that, but a reduced demand from, from big DOD um, and, and some reduced demand internationally as well. And yeah, and, and the market reflects it, certainly. I mean, like, it's, you don't see these large, like on some of these sites, you don't see large drop downs of like, here's, you know, three dozen tubes that are just ready to go and ready to ship. Um, I, to your point, right? Like I, companies can't keep that much on hand because that's how that, that's that much money that they're out while they're waiting for these orders to be filled. And it's just, it's a very, it's a very different experience. I think, I think the demand is still there. I just, with, when you look at other factors, right, the economy, despite what liberal media will say, the economy right. sucks right now. 
Um, <clears throat> people are not able to spend what they were before, and the dollar doesn't nearly go as far as it did even a year ago. Or and pricing know. went up at, at the same time. Exactly. So, so you have you know your 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 basic economics one on one. Pricing will continue mm-hmm. to go up uh, for goods and services. Our you know inflation on top of that, and our wages do not increase uh, accordingly. More or less, a lot of people's don't. And then on top of that, you know, ever changing taxation brackets and, and tax regulations. Uh, I talked to a lot of people over the past couple of months, and you know what, twenty two and twenty three fiscal years had for them were tax returns. And now in twenty three, um, and even looking ahead to twenty four, a lot of these people will owe money. So their ex- their extra income, their extra you know play money, if you will, is just no longer there. Um, so that slows the buying uh, for a lot of people. Um, and then while they wait, unfortunately, prices just continue to go up. Yeah, I mean, you can, and that's, you know, people, and and what what choice do you really have? Like, I have to wait to save up the money. I'm not going to, because I'll never tell anybody, like, don't, don't do an equity loan on your home to buy night vision. Don't, if you can avoid it, don't finance it and stuff, you know, like, be smart about your purchases. But it it, it does become that difficult scenario that you just detailed where it's like, prices are only going up. So how long is it going to take you to save for it? Or what are you going to do? Are you going to sell some stuff? Are you going to uh, maybe settle, right? Maybe you don't get that L3 filmless tube or, or whatever that you had really had your heart set on. Maybe you look at something like the XLSHs are getting a lot harder to come by. I think their replacements, what the pH is that new tube? Yeah. So, I mean, I mean, th- there's, so Elbit, you know, if we're just going to talk Elbit real quick. So Elbit has realistically well over 200 different SKUs of, of tube types, white, green, gated, non-gated, you know, formats, mm-hmm. et cetera. Um, Elbit actually has a, a specialized image tube on Mars. Uh, a lot of people don't know that. Maybe oh, I wow. might have mentioned that 15 months ago, but a little cool fact. Um, but no, so there's there's never a, there's not really a super seeding part number to Axel SH. Um, it's still tiered. So, you know, most people are, are most familiar with XLSH, SLH, PH, YH, VH. Uh, VH is, is like an L3 aviation grade tube, you know, spot spec wise, some higher minimums. Uh, YH is your standardized mil spec uh, image tube. Uh, you know, if it's Elbit, it's, it's filmed. L3 would be like an 18 UM or UA series, depending on cosmetics. Uh, PH is a kind of a step down. Uh, from that, uh, from the YH, it, it allows for one more additional spot. Um, but I think everybody industry wide realizes that the pH, although allows for an extra spot, it's never there. Um, yeah. So although it can be there, I've not seen one tube. Um, and and over the, you know, I won't necessarily reference some some old um, metrics, but some new metrics for sure. Um, I think I've seen maybe one that had even a spot in that zone. Most of the time they're, they're VH or, or at least YH quality in cosmetics and performance. Um, another thing, you know, going into performance, um, the industry, especially Elbit, you know, they're winning a lot of contracts, right? They just uh, won a Marine Corps contract funded almost $170 million, almost immediately, IDIQ, $500 million for the 31Ds uh, with the ECOTI system. Um, oh, wow. So those are taking 2376 MinFOM image tubes. Right after that, um, or within the same realm of time, uh, a 2376 contract was awarded to Elbit for replacement tubes and new tubes. Um, and then Elbit also just won a almost $20 million contract for PBS 14. So Elbit tubes are doing really well, but on the flip side, the DOD has rated contracts that are requiring these, you know, upper echelon performance metrics. So mm-hmm. trickle down to the commercial market, you know, a, we're just not going to get some high farm systems because well, the government needs it, you know, the right. Marine Corps right. needs it, the army needs it, uh, what have you. Um, so that's a little trickle down effect um, that I think a lot of people are seeing um, kind of immediately this year and, and really in the last couple of months is is that trickle down effect of, you know, the farms are no longer really above 2,500 with Elbit tubes, right? You'll, you'll have some outliers, but in a lot of cases mm-hmm. you're getting, you know, 17 to 2,000, 17 to 2,200 figure of merit, uh, seeing a lot more 64 line in pairs or 72. Um, so you are seeing some stronger SNRs, um, but lower farms. 
uh, mostly because a lot of the high FOM demand is for those DOD contracts. I mean, and they're still they're still good performing too. I mean, mine are like just over two thousand FOM, and for for me, like an average person who doesn't do it, like they're anybody listening, like that's not to say that the Elbit stuff that you have access to is junk. It is still really really good for basic uses and and by all means you won't look through it and be disappointed like at all it's still no and 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 truth be told you know moving into kind of um you know gen 2 spectrum uh nnvt tubes which is a older photonist design came prolific because photonist europe's demand was so high with the ukraine war and everything else that they've been booked um so the U.S. Um, distribution channels are just seeing less uh, resources, being tubes, uh, to mm-hmm. come over to the states, and therefore, you know, the industry as a whole still wants some kind of better priced uh, alternatives, if you will, to Gen Gen three, Lbit or L three. Uh, so NNBT kind of entered the space, um, but kind of fast forward, the industry's industry's seen some changes. Um, yeah. The industry has seen some drama. And I think the industry is in a little bit of a hypocrisy moment Um, as an insider and an outsider looking in, you know, there's a lot of changes that don't make sense. You can see a lot of hypocrisy in plain sight. Um, And it's kind of wild how times, how times in the space have changed. Yeah. I mean, I, and I think what you're referring to is just like the, some of the, the companies right not wanting to, or, or people, and really what I see more is people online, like flame posting about this, the anti-China stuff, which I get to an extent, right? Like to an extent, I think we all support it and understand it. Um, but it, to, it a, confusing, to a degree, right? Yeah, to a degree. I mean, like the, the confusing thing for me is um, like the 1431s, which is what I run, right? And we've seen a, a handful of companies drop those for some various reasons. Um, and you know, when I, when I've talked to people, I get, oh, well, it's an anti-China thing. And I'm like, okay, well, I, I mean, I get that, you know, gl- uh, global uh, politics, uh, you know, being what they are and everything, China's not like a great trade or a great ally of ours and everything. Um, but then it's odd because then everybody still buys hollow sun lasers, you know, because the civilian market for lasers sucks. They'll still buy hollow sun optics because they're affordable compared to what else is out there. And they have like a, a rich feature set and everything. Um, I actually, you know, I, I actually had somebody tell me, you know what, if you can't afford to buy American, you should just run iron sights on your pistol. I was like, dude, I am not putting myself at a, at a disadvantage in defending my right. home or family purely for your politics. Like, I won't say that I support China because I don't, but I also do find it to be laughable. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You're, and, you're trying- and I think, I think it's ridiculous. The, I think perhaps the the sensible and common sense real approach would be I don't support China more than I have to or more than I currently am. And by <laughs> that I mean, you know, we all shop on Amazon. We all shop at Target. We all shop at Walmart. We all order stuff online that in whole or part is derived from China. So regardless of you know, our stance, our personal opinions, what have you, in the end, to a capacity, everybody is still supporting China. But you have to, right? They are a powerhouse mm-hmm. manufacturer of the world. Take away their, their crippling economy and the, the stock market and the ebb and flows of, of that. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, China is and will continue to be a source of raw goods, finished systems, uh, components, and that really still does tie into uh, thermal, night vision, et cetera. Now, recently within the industry, there's been a collective of people who have come together. It's an organization that's been around uh, many years. There's nothing wrong with the organization, the, the people in it um, or whatnot. But unfortunately, within the organization, there's still hypocrisy, right? So they came out and said, we should impose a 100% tariff on the importation of Chinese night vision, CMOS sensors, and uh, thermal cool technology. But they drill down more or less sure, uh, sure. deeper into that. But at the same time, there's entities within the organization, and here's where the hypocrisy comes in, entities within the organization who say, no, anti-China, let's do 100% tariff, I'll put my name on it, still selling your hollow sun optics, still selling your hollow sun lasers, still selling NNBT, 
still selling Jerry 31s. So what, what are we doing? You know, from a consumer standpoint, I think consumers need to take a step back and look and say, hey, why is this company anti-China, which I think is really anti-Argus, in my opinion, and many others in the industry, but why are they anti-China yet still profiting off of China? So we, we can't be this wishy-washy for, for the consumer base, I don't think. I think if you're going to take an anti-China stance on the importation of, of night vision, thermal, CMOS, and related equipment, then you should also stop selling Holosun optics, Holosun lasers, the Jerry 31s, IRA. You know, don't half-ass your stance. Have some balls and say, hey, I signed this because it's impacting my business. It's not really impacting a lot of people's businesses, but some housing manufacturers, right? Mm -hmm. And you see this and it's warranted in common sense because you can go on these websites and say, huh, that's weird. You're anti-China, but you have a Jerry 31 on your site. You have an MVT. You have all these Holosun. You have, you know, AGM. You have wh whatever you have, mm -hmm. right? Whatever derives from outside of the United States that perhaps is China, which is to include optics, PBS 14 optics. I see all these people, all these companies promote Singaporean optics. They're not Singaporean guys. They are China. <laughs> I don't know how else to say it. I, I've been holding my tongue and a lot of people have, but it's like, that's not Singapore. That's China. And that's on Singapore. P that's has, PBS 14s you're saying? Oh yeah. There's a lot of PVS 14 style. You know, we, in the industry, we use style. So you can have, uh, stuff from Salvo, you can have stuff from from Noctis Technologies, you can have stuff from QFT, Fuji, you know, RPO, they're all a style. So that's the, essentially they can go into PVS 14 optic style housing. Okay. But there's a, a massive wave of, you know, these are quote unquote Singaporean or these are quote unquote non-China. They all come from China. What people don't realize is there's a lot of countries that do not require but so much to be considered a country of origin. See what I'm what saying? You? So, so you can bring in components, right. From wherever. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and you can then assemble to an extent, there is percentages uh, that vary country to country uh, for the import exportation to be reclassified as a new country of origin. So, I don't know the exact specifics of every piece in every country per se, but more or less the, the idea is this. There are companies in, in, in host countries outside of the U.S. who will take uh, components from China, mm -hmm. do enough labor, do enough changes, manipulations, what have you, to legally be reclassified as the country of origin that they're in, in this case, Singapore. And so and that, oh, it's get the workaround to 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 it, be it is it is the workaround, yeah. and and oh. and I won't say the other company who's doing it, massive company, um, but there are there are optic companies or housing companies using Chinese components under the preface of their Singaporean origin, and yes, That's crazy. from a legal perspective, they are in fact Singaporean. Right, because you can reclassify right. the origin, but you know they're just taking it in from China, doing the work that they have to to legally reclassify, and then shipping it from Singapore. And it's been this way for a while. I mean, it's not like the technology on PVS fourteen style optics, right, uh, has changed in the last ten, fifteen years. Like we haven't seen because that was so that and that was one of the things that I was presented with, or I guess people asked me the question was. You know, uh, these companies selling these um, the the Jerry thirty ones or the Jerry fourteen, right? The single tube version, right? Is right. it just these? Is it just these night vision companies trying to you know uh, swing for a, a fast buck and sell some crappy products? And my initial response to the couple inquiries I got was, well, I mean, look at the company you're purchasing from. A lot of these companies have some pretty decent track records. I wouldn't I wouldn't jump to assume that they're just going to throw all of that work out the window to make a quick buck that doesn't make any sense and then also to say I, I don't i don't know enough about any of it to say for sure whether you're actually losing out compared to 
you know, uh, if you're buying this, this Jerry 31, which has, or, or even their Jerry 14, right. Uh, which has NNVT tubes, I believe. And then, you know, compare that to a PVS 14 with a Photonis tube. I, I I don't know enough to know if you're actually sacrificing anything or losing anything. Um, but it does seem to have taken that, that bit of market share. I don't, I don't think it was one of those like ultra capitalists screw my customer base. I'm just going to get rich as fast as I can moves. And I think some people looked at it that way. I, it doesn't, that, that idea doesn't jive with me at all. No, the, the, the idea of I'm just going to push a pedal of product to make money doesn't jive with me either. No, the, the, the Jerry line of products, whether that be the, the Jerry 31, the Jerry F, the, the Jerry C5, CE5, the new one coming out, um, what have you, that does fit a very commercial segment. I would not go further than saying commercial. I'm not going to say professional or duty use. I'm not going to say military and law enforcement. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say commercial use. And I think the Jerry product line or series came about at a good time. You know, the Ukrainian conflict and Europe conflict was popping off. Demand for photonist tubes in Europe skyrocketed. U.S. supply of those tubes did dwindle. Um, and as you know, businesses in the United States supporting U.S. end users, there still was a void for some less expensive options. So input the Jerry line of products. So I don't think anybody, and from personal experience or professional experience talking with customers or other companies, the Jerry 31 is not here to replace anything. I think it just gives consumers an additional option to say, yeah. hey, if you're going to be more novice with your kit, if you're going to be more recreational, then perhaps you don't need uh, a more duty rated system. Nothing yeah. wrong with that, right? I think perhaps the idea that China stepped in to dominate the market is false to an extent that I think the Chinese product line almost introduced a new market segment, right? Because yeah. what you had in the past in a lot of cases was, you know, especially with the Jerry 31s at a 4K price. Okay, well, what can you get for four grand? You get Jerry 31s, you can get a PVS 14, basically it, right? Yeah. So for somebody yeah. who's like, well, I could get a goggle or a mono. I'm not really going to use it all too much. Why not just go with the goggle? Mm -hmm. Right. I'm, I'm a novice at recreational use, you know, whatever you tell yourself, if you're not really in the duty or professional use category, there are products out there that can support you in a more economical fashion. I don't think these right. products are chasing, you know, standardized mil spec PVS 14 options. I don't think they're chasing, you know, 1431s or Katanas or 31 Alphas or 31, you know, DTM. I don't think they're chasing anything like that out of the market. I just think they're capturing a newer market segment, which was those those novice people who said, okay, I've got four grand, I can spend a 14 or I can get binos. And I think in a lot of cases, every seller of these Jerry 31s is pretty honest. They're pretty honest about, hey, the optics are not standard mil spec. The, the tubes are not L3 tubes. They're not even Elbit tubes. So I think there's a lot of transparency happening to support this new novice segment of night vision in the commercial space. Is So, and I don't know, have you had the opportunity to, to, to play with these at all? Like, what is their performance oh, yeah. like? I mean, is it is it truly kind of that... that because I mean, whether it's accurate or not, and it's it's funny because you can find these really great videos on YouTube of people going, you know, I have to have L3. I have to. And when you look at the comparison of tubes, like here's your L3, here's your Elbit, here's your Fatanus, people can't always tell the difference. Um, so it, it, I don't want to say it makes the 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 brand discussion irrelevant, but it also does, but it does highlight kind of the, the gross misunderstanding that the, I'll say like the general community has about what you really need in effective night vision. Does that NNVT offering, does that really kind of come in, in line with what we were expecting from like the Fatanis, uh, you know, a year ago or two years ago? No, no. So, so, and, and the reality is, is, the performance of the NNVT, there's a couple different series, um, mm -hmm. auto-gated, non-gated, what, what have you. But no, so the, the Photonis Echo 4G or higher echelon tubes have always been and continue to be better than the NNVT. Okay. 
Right. The NNVT is based off an older style, older generation photonist tube from years past. Photonists themselves have made better tubes. And I'll be the first to say half of photonists tubes are much better than L3 tubes, much better than Elbit tubes. They're phenomenal in a lot of conditions. This idea that just because they're Gen 2 and lack gallium arsenide, they're somehow shit is shit itself. <laughs> Fabulous tubes. They are remarkable tubes. A plus to photonist defense and exosense, great tubes. See, that's not the, the tough part. People don't realize that. They just see that it's like not Gen 3 because we we get perpetuated this idea in the community because of some bigger names, some talking heads who may or may not have endorsements or support or sponsors or whatever that just say, as long as you buy Gen 3, you're fine. And it's like you could buy some right. shit tubes that are Gen 3. You could also buy some really good Gen 2 tubes or I think they call them like Gen 2 Plus or whatever. Like that. some, I've seen that some places. Um, yeah, you know, and, 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 and there's a lot of marketing terms, um, you know, but at the end of the day, it's Gen 2, right? It's either it either meets Gen 2 or, or it meets Gen 3 or it meets Gen 1. There is no Gen 4. Uh, the NVD Next program is is still coming up. The IVAS program is still in testing. So there's a lot of next iterative, iterative steps in the industry, but not in the commercial space. Um, but no, there's Photonis makes great tubes. Elbit and L3 make great tubes. And NVT are fine tubes, right? Again, you're not paying. And I, I think there's some discrepancies um, that needs to be noted that you're not paying for L3. You're not paying for Elbit. You're not paying for Photonis mil spec, right? But what you're getting is this capability to see at night regardless. And I think if yeah. you're a novice consumer, if you're going to use it a couple of times a month or a couple of times a year, um, you don't have a professional, you know, lifestyle that requires more, you know, purposeful built kit, um, then these products are good. Right. I think and, they fill a void, not every void, but I think some people within the industry are thinking, hey, this Chinese product is coming for my life. You know, it's coming for my housing. It's coming for my system. And the reality yeah. is it's not right. You just and if you think it is, perhaps maybe you need to refocus your own, you know, business plan or ideas in the market space, because nobody is going to be nobody who's considering a Jerry 31 is also considering a 31 alpha. It's not happening, right? No, a, they're, they're at very they're, polar opposite price points. Yeah, exactly. Right? And even, even $10,000 systems or eight or the 1431, if you are set, nobody's ever going to be between a Jerry 31 and a 1431. A, it's like double the price. B, totally different. Um, but it's just, you don't have that. And you have people or entities or organizations perhaps pushing this idea that these Chinese products are in fact coming to really take over. They're taking over a new market share. They're not taking over a market share you had. Maybe oh, you well. want the market share, don't get me wrong, but they're not here to take it away from you because your products are at a higher price point. I would, right? I would almost venture to say that it's more a, uh, I don't want to say attack because I don't think it's a really a malicious thing, but I would say it cuts more like like the Jerry 14. I would say cuts more into the market share, which is small in my estimation, right? That is currently occupied by like the um the hell is it called? Like the digital the tubes. Um Psionix Ospin? Uh no, it's not Psionix. It's the uh like the site mark Wraith, I think is what it's called. Is the oh that's like four hundred dollars. Yeah, I think that, you know, well, because then you can you can build dual tubes for like a grand, you know, by you buy their bridge and everything. I think that these are infringing more into that market share, which, again, to my by my uh, my estimation is very small, but it's catering to the very budget conscious. You know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> but I, I it, it is definitely catering to the budget conscious, but the budget conscious people are not going to be buying these upper purposeful built products. You know, they're not buying a Jerry 31 over a DTMBS. Oh, yeah. Over a yeah I agree. 100% right? I agree. So yeah. we, we really have to, to hone in on this idea of, is it an attack? Could be, right? I mean, they, they're proposing a 100% tariff. Never in the history of ever has anybody got away with a 100% tariff that I'm aware of, right, within this industry or within this space. Mm -hmm. um, currently, you know, I was reading before this uh, 
call, actually, you know, one of the higher ones is, is not to exceed 30%, but somehow we want to impose 100% import on anything derived from China in the CMOS thermal or night vision space, which would have to include half of the thermal technology, half of the thermal companies. Uh, why don't we just throw in hollow sun while we're at it? Let's throw in, you know, what ha- whatever, whatever derives from, from China and just if, if this group of people doesn't want to support the importation of, of those goods, then don't let everybody else in a free market society take these products that a work. They don't have manufacturing defects or, or, or high RMA rates off the production line. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're not trying to make a bazillion housings or systems or, or, you know, ancillary products. You know, they're sticking to more or less what they know and shipping product that works. Um, so we take a stance and say, hey, you know, these people are anti-China on these things, then be anti-China on everything or don't be anti-China on anything. It's I, I think it needs to be either all anti-China like you're proposing and then take away your Holosun, take away your other stuff off your site and tell mm-hmm. consumers like, listen, the reason we're not doing these products, the reason we're not offering Argus, Holosun, Jerry's anymore is because, you know, of our stance that we put in this letter. But until you take these products off and educate your consumer base on why you stopped it, a lot of consumers are calling around asking questions. I remember when people dropped the Argus 1431. Is my warranty still valid? Is is this support going to be around for a couple of years? I don't know. You know, I'm, I'm not that company. I don't work for these other companies. A US Night Vision 1431 support indefinitely, as long as the product is supported by Argus. Well, and that's, as a consumer, I think that ultimately that's where, again, as a consumer, our focus should be because if you've already, if you already own one of these units, that's where your concern now lies is I have a warranty, whether it's, uh, I know some places do five, some do 10. I've seen two in some instances for various. Well, yeah. So uh, glad, Austin, glad you brought up the warranty. <laughs> so U.S. Night Vision, like I said, um, Officially around 2001, a little beforehand, we offer a two-year warranty. Elbit mm-hmm. offers us a two-year warranty on the tubes. We offer a two-year warranty to our end users. Um, the warranties in this industry have got kind of interesting. You see a lot of five years, 10 years, lifetime, no questions asked, limit. What the hell's all this mean? I don't know. My question, here's some common sense questions a consumer should be asking. I see a lifetime warranty. Whose lifetime? Is it is it my lifetime? Is it my my family's lifetime? If I transfer this warranty to my kid, is it their mm-hmm. lifetime? And so on and so forth. You know, that's a common sense question. Who's lifetime? Second off, let's look at these five and ten year uh, warranties. Has a business been around five or ten years? Case in point, there was a night vision company started up uh, within the last forty eight months. Uh, who offered a extended, whether it be five or 10 year warranty, um, uh, essentially a warranty that superseded their incorporation date, right? So there are companies that have warranties that go beyond the length of their organization. How does that make sense? Are you going to be around in five years? I don't know. That's a good question. This company offered a five or 10 year warranty and within 48 months open and closed. So yeah. how, how good is that warranty? Some, some say it's still valid, but again, you closed your doors. How, how valid can it be? Yeah. It's only valid as long as there's somebody to honor it, you know, right. That's, that's where, that is where I, I will say I get a little bit and, and I'm not, I, you know, to be clear, I'm not against anybody trying to break into the industry. I'm not against anybody trying to start or run their own business. But when people talk to me about night vision purchases and I'm not, again, I'm not an expert, but I have it. So people ask me. And then, you know, I found whatever website, whatever company, and I'll go, you, you know what? I've never heard of them. I would encourage you to do some more research because there's, I find companies like every week where I'm like, oh, you, they, they sell night vision, you know, whether they assemble or they're a reseller, there's, there's a lot of companies in this space. And just because I, I mean, who the fuck am I just because I don't know of them. I mean, half the companies that, that you rattled off in this conversation, I'm, I, I'm not intimately familiar with. I may have seen their page once and scroll or something. So it's one of those things where like when people refer me, I, I go, listen, you may not get the best deal at some of these like legacy retailers. It'll probably be close, 
But what you get is usually better customer service. You know they're probably, barring something large, they're not going anywhere. And then you usually have a better selection. And your turnaround time, some of these companies, I mean, man, I'd be so upset if I, like, my brother was looking at, uh, last summer, he was looking at buying a PVS 14. And the company he was looking at, because he got a discount through some kind of weird partnership with another company that he bought, like a helmet through or something, a 30 to 60 day wait for assembly and shipment. I'm like, dude, I'd be pissed. Like, yes, you're saving like $300 off the price, but you're also going to wait two months or, or more to get this. Right. And they're not going to build it until you pay for it. It's not like, hey, we'll build it. Then we'll we'll debit your account. Like you got to pay up and then wait and hope there's no extension. No, you know what I mean? No it's processing a- delays. I mean, any industry will have delays in, in supply chain or, or yeah. processing. So a 30 to 60 day window could probably realistically be 45 to 90 days. And and that's not uncommon. Mm-hmm. That's not totally unwarranted in the space for any industry. Um, it's kind of the times we're in. But, you know, I, I'm with you. There, there are a ton of night vision companies um, that have been around ages that may not be in the forum world may not be in the Instagram or the Reddit or the the Facebook or the the social media space, but they're tenured. They've got the DOD contracts and everything else. Do you, well, here's the prime point. Do you hear anybody buying from Apache? I don't even know who that is. Perfect. <laughs> a great example of a tenured supplier to the Department of Defense um, supplying optics that really is not going anywhere. And they keep doing what they're doing, but nobody, yeah. I mean, people hear about them, right? But it's 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 more or less an unspoken entity. Um, and there's tons of those entities out there that do a lot of core night vision business, whether domestically or internationally, that are not, you know, the top 20 names that come to mind. And only because the top 20 names have a social media um, following, have social media uh, support or, 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 dimension to them if you will sure sure they they've they have that that marketing aspect that they've invested sure, exactly in. and 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 some of the more legacy or tenured uh organizations don't have to necessarily put in the same effort um they're not competing with the same customer base or end users um so the the organization or excuse me the industry of night vision as a whole is much grander than people on the forums think some people mm-hmm. have told me Night vision industry and the entire industry itself is based on Reddit, Discord, and these Facebook groups. And I was like, wow, man, I, I had no idea. I was like, shit, <laughs> man, what am I doing with my life? Reddit, Discord, and Facebook are the enti- entire industry. And I was like, wow, wow, that's... Wow, man, you're brilliant. Somebody just, should hire you to run a company. Wow, that's crazy. I know. I, I was just, I was beyond my, I was like, wow, look at all this market research and nobody knew that. Fuck, man. Wow. <laughs> you just can't help but to be like, is this guy so naive to think that an entire industry is solely based on Reddit, Discord, and Facebook? Well, and this is why I, this is exactly why I tell people to do their own research and why I'm apprehensive when people are like, you know, um, like we're, we both know, uh, Drew over at, at dirty civilian. And so I'll use Drew's name here. Cause Drew's a great dude. He's been on the pod before. And somebody would, would say, well, Drew said, I just need to get gen three. Cause that's what's really good or, or whatever. You know what I mean? And people will just take that one person. And this is, this is totally, this is totally hypothetical. Exactly. I'm with freak you. Out. <laughs> uh, they'll take one person's input and thought or recommendation. And it could have even been out of context. It could be like an offhand comment, you know, like, you know, hey, I get a, a thousand messages a day. Yeah, just buy Gen 3. You'll be okay. Move on to the next one. I don't, you know what I mean? You don't know. Exactly. It, it, it could very well be a more generalistic answer to, to mm-hmm. exactly that. You know, look at all these DMs I'm getting. How can I more or less answer this in a in a black and white way, right, that that I've experienced? And, and Drew's a phenomenal guy. Dirty Civilian is doing great. Um, so, so good example. But it really could be one of those things that says, oh, shit, I've got all these DMs. I'm not going to answer a thousand DMs. I don't expect anybody to. And I hope the industry doesn't expect anybody to answer a thousand DMs on a story. No, But but it's not a bad general idea. I mean, you know, as as technology improves and iterates, you know, just saying a blanket statement, Gen 3 is probably good to go is is more or less 
an accurate at yeah. face value statement, you know, but when you start diving in, you know, then we start introducing the novice, you know, recreational segment. Oh, gen two at this price point, because you're only going to do it at this. And, you know, I kind of, I tend to look at things like an ROI, right? So is my return on investment of this night vision going to be equatable to anything I'm going to be doing with it? If I'm buying this night vision to post on Instagram that I have night vision, do you need to spend 31 alpha money to no. take a picture and put it in your safe? No. If you have it, cool. God bless you. Spend it. It's your money. If you want to be sensible, let's look at how often you're going to be using it to how much you're going to be spending, right? If you're going to be using it once or twice a month and, and doing so, you know, frequently every month, the PVS 14, maybe we can talk dual twos, maybe not, right? If you're going to mm -hmm. be, if you're a professional capacity and using this day in and day out, don't start with the PVS 14, just go ahead and get, you know, your goggles, let's get them out of the way, throw some, you know, a Saffron Optics ECODI on it or, or what have you, let's increase your capabilities. But, you know, those are people who do this for a living, right? Everybody else who's just your Instagram or picture posters or people are going to use it on a hike once or twice a year. They want it because, you know, shit hits the fan. They want to say they have it. Cool. Whatever, whatever you want to spend your money on, it's America. God bless you. Right. Do it. But nobody's going to buy this product over this product just on price if if they need it. You know what I mean? And and I think it's weird too when, when you're able to start putting context around the performance specifically. It's funny how how it changes what people suddenly need too. So like, you know, oh, because uh, the comparison, right? Gen 2 to Gen 3 uh, at distance is where most normal people who aren't familiar with night vision could most easily notice the difference. Is that and a lot of that? And, and and let's let's say the signal to noise ratio was the same. A lot of that is going to come from the gain value of the tube, right? The mm -hmm. higher, the, the more voltage in the tube, the higher the gain, you know, L3 with um, the TMVC coined great marketing term, super gain. L3 just calls it high gain. Same, same. Um, that's a 90,000 and above. First derived from the PVS 31K for the South Koreans. Um, they needed a higher uh, gain value system. Moving into the commercial market, the higher gain is, is, is you know, e equals clarity, distance. You know, it's just a recipe for success. Okay. Um, the Gen 2 does not come close to that. Now, Photonis uh, does have high gain uh, systems that you can, when you convert, they're on the Gen 3 spectrum, you know, 60, 70, some are 80,000 uh, converted. Uh, the NNVT is not like that, right? The NNVT is much less than the Echoes used to be or, or okay. could be in line in some cases. So, um, but the okay. signal to noise on the NNVTs are not what the Echoes are or used to be. Right. So I would say kind of the, the tier, if you will, of, of tube pricing and tech performance, what have you, is, is an NVT. Um, I don't even want to put Protonis third because realistically there are tubes that cost more. There are tubes that are better than some of the Elbit and L3. Um, so I'm going to say it's really an NVT. And then I'm going to kind of group Photonis, Elbit, and L3 together. Now, obviously, People listening, when I say I'm grouping Photonis, Elbit, and L3 together, you're going to shit yourself or blow your mind or whatnot. <laughs> but that's that's one of these things that it's like Photonis makes great tubes. Let's stop saying it's Gen 2 and it's shit because it's Gen 2. It's just not. Right? You can have a very shitty Elbit. You can have a very shitty L3. You can have a very good Photonis. You have a very good NMVT, which in theory – and in reality, could be better than some of the comparisons of these other manufacturers, right? So we're not necessarily always comparing apples to oranges. We're kind of comparing apples to steak dinners. I mean, they're kind of just opposites, yeah. opposite, opposite price points. They're opposite in what they do, how they perform, et cetera. So let me ask you about the, because one of the questions on like some of these Facebook pages and things is, and it's understandable, is guys are looking more than ever, probably right. You know, best bang for buck, and we really don't know because you know signal to noise ratio and 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 figure merits and and gain like what I don't know what any of this means. <clears throat> and they'll they'll propose a question, right? They'll they'll say, 
I saw this, the Jerry 14 or the Jerry 31. I was thinking about doing it because it, it falls, you know, I could save for another month or two and I, and I have the money for it. And, um, it seems like an attractive, uh, purchase, right? Because it comes with your mounting hardware and the 31 comes with the, the battery pack. And, and as a person who has no idea, right, it, it does seem like, Hey, this makes the most sense. Like I, you know, and people will say, no, instead you should just wait and you should, you should look for a used, uh, PVS 14 Omni too, with no Omni. warranty at all. Yep. And, oh God. Yeah. So what is, what are the Omni? Cause I've seen those with like, like Omni five slash six or Omni seven slash eight. And guys, they throw this out there as it's like the band aid umbrella solution, the, the, like the best bang for buck used market offering. And I really don't know too much about them other than that. A lot of people recommend them. Well, the, here's the thing with, with buying, we'll call them secondhand. They could perhaps be gray market stolen tubes. I've seen that many a times in 23 and 2024. Um, but the thing about Omni tubes is there's never a spec sheet. You're not going to call the tube manufacturer and get a spec sheet. So you can only base the performance on the minimum contract specification of that Omni bus contract. On the flip side, you actually have actuals for everything else. The Elbit to you buy new, the NMVT, the Photonics, the L3, you have spec. So you can't always compare apples to apples unless you're comparing the bare minimum of the Omni contract to the actuals of this. But it's even then, it's not that's minimum on paper what the actual the tube is who the hell knows you're never going to know uh stop asking i see it all the time can i get a spec sheet no you're never going to get a spec sheet um on those omni tubes but they don't carry a warranty sometimes questionable sources um is it a good option I don't know. I mean, to, to each their own, I guess, in, in that um, buyer beware, take caution, um, do your due diligence, um, try to find out how they're sourcing tubes, where they're sourcing tubes, because there is a lot in 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 the interim space between when I was last on and now, there were clip-ons that fell off the truck that got resold and Uh-oh. suits <laughs> did show up at everybody's door. And start asking for money and product and, and saying, you know, let's let's get some history on, on, you know, where this product went, how you got it, where it came from, where it went. Um, so I'm always I'm always cautious to, to tell people, be cautious yourself. If you're looking on these forums, especially if it's not a new unit uh, from a manufacturer, and especially if it's a, hey, I have surplus tubes or, hey, I have this question it. You should. You're, you're the consumer. Question where your sources are coming from. Yeah. I mean, you, you have every right as the consumer spending the money. Well, and, and I would even go so, as far to say, not even you're right. You have every responsibility as a, as a consumer then to, I, I mean, we all work hard for our money, you know, and you're obviously looking secondhand because you are budget oriented or, and we all or, are. Or, or, or perhaps that's all you want to spend, right? There's the other trend of thought is I don't want to exceed X amount of money. Well, X true, amount right? of money may only lead up into you know, those secondhand gray market systems that just might, or it might go into that NNVT Jerry 14 ish system. So, right? so but I think what, what is the origin behind these Omni tubes? Cause is it like a, is Omni a company? Is it? No, so so Om, Omni, Omni boss is, is uh, contracts for image tubes to the, to the government. Okay. So, Yep. So whatever the government standard is, Omni 1 through, we're at Omni 8 now. Um, so it's just various standards throughout the years to set a benchmark standard that tubes have to meet in order to go to the government. Right. But they don't they don't ship with data sheets like the commercial market gets. It's just this tube meets this current Omni contract. Here you go, Army. Here you go, Navy. Here you go, whoever. Hmm. So that's that's Omni tubes. So that's now, Omni seven. Omni seven does have higher minimums than Omni eight, which is why you tend to see Omni seven tubes go for a more premium, hundred to two hundred dollars more on the gray market uh, than than perhaps Omni eight. Uh, but again, you're only buying off minimum specs, not actuals. Kind of going to the Jerry fourteen, Jerry thirty one, if you will, for a second. I think a lot of the responsibility comes down to the company selling it. You know, a lot of these companies, like I said earlier, are being very transparent. They're saying, hey, it is not a DTMVS. It is not a 31 Alpha. 
It's not a 1431, but here's what it is. For $4,000, you get a Gen 2 non-mil spec optics. The optics aren't my favorite, but for four grand, you get a truly feature-rich goggle. Um, and for the novice consumer, if you're going to use it a couple times a month, if you're going to flex on the Instagram and, and social media uh, channels, okay, you didn't break the bank to do it. You still have night vision. You can still see at night. You know, don't get me wrong. You, just because you have a 1600 FOM NNVT tube doesn't mean you're blind. Right. Um, some people think, oh, if I don't get Gen 3, if I don't get L3, then I'm just not going to be able to see. It doesn't even matter if you get L3 or NNVT. If you're in a completely pitch black room with no IR, no nothing, guess what both of those tubes see? Absolutely nothing. Right. No, and so, we, did that, <laughs> we did that this weekend running, you know, when well, all of our group is running everybody that was there. So the four of us had night vision. Um, I had my 1431s and then everybody else had PBS 14s, um, <clears throat> all Elbit tubes. And we just did some basic structure clearing exercises at a buddy's barn, which does have windows, by the way. So you do get some ambient light in there. And my God, it was difficult unless you were turning illuminators on, which we tried not to, right? It was difficult. It is really until you actually experience for people listening until you actually experience like an actual dark space without any ambient light to help your, your tubes, like amplify the light, obviously you don't, it, it's not just all, it doesn't always work with no questions asked. It's not like splinter cell or ground branch or whatever. Like you actually need some light. And I was very, uh, I don't want to say unnerved, but it was a, it was a little bit intimidating. I was like, wow, I, I really see less right now than I thought I was going to. Well, you know, so the, the analog tube technology, you know, still requires an input to have an output, mm -hmm. right? That output window is 100% dependent upon an input. No input equals no output, right? right? So I always, you know, customers that talk to me over the years, I give this analogy, it doesn't matter if you spend a thousand dollars or a million dollars, if your night vision does not have input, whether that be on board, helmet, hand, whatever kind of IR, ambient light, light pollution, whatever you want to, to chunk that into, it still needs an input. And without an mm -hmm. input, it has no output. Well, and that's and and that's important for people listening to note because yes, your <clears throat> night vision most housings, I won't say all of them because I know some don't, but most housings now do offer an onboard illuminator. But what pe and people think that that solves the problem, and technically it does. But if we're talking about if we're talking about how things operate in today's world, and we're talking about near peer forces, which is what everybody's apparent concern is, right? And I get it, I'm not disagreeing with any of that. Right. They probably have night vision too, which means they can see your illuminator which means that you're actually hurting yourself potentially more than you are helping yourself. And I mean, all this is to say, like you need to understand the limitations and the, the, the actual core functionality of how the device works. It's not just, you know, the, the tube goes on, witchcraft happens and then you see it dark. Like it's slightly more complicated than that. Wait, wait, witchcraft doesn't happen. My mind's blown. <laughs> Yeah. I could have swore that, you know, I always say night vision kind of more or less is like 10 is 90% science and 10% magic. Um, and the magic to me and what I tell people is the magic is you take it out and you look at the sky and you're like, wow, where has this mm -hmm. been all my life? And you know what you're not asking in that moment? How does is this it work? Gen 2? Is this oh. an L bit? Is this an L3? <laughs> did, did, did this, did this tube come from China? Is this a Chinese system? You're just so flabbergasted that you're like, wow, I own night vision when whether it's professional use, whether it's, you know, novice, you know, I'm going to use it a couple of times a year. You now have night vision mm -hmm. and now you can see at night. It's that simple. <laughs> yeah. I mean, at, at the end of the day, like buy what's what's in your your price range, your capability as long. I mean, it, it's going to be better well, than it was, you know. With within reason, and, and and here's what I want to say: it does still go back to the sellers of these products. I know we spoke a lot about China and whatnot, and and I'll tie it into this segment again too. But I think it's the wholehearted responsibility of any manufacturer, retailer, reseller selling these what a lot of people would classify as as novice or sub professional grade products. 
I think it's the duty of those resellers to say, hey, this product is a novice product. It is not to the same standard as an L3 or an Albit or, or what have you. It's not. It never will be, or at least in the near term, won't isn't, and, and probably no plans to be. If you tell them that and they still decide to go with it, guess what that is? It is a free market society. Yeah. And honestly, people, if there's, there's some video out there, you can find it. The, the, the cheaper options, like the, the Jerry 31s with the, the clip on for thermal, whatever, is that the C5 or, or whatever it is? Uh, Yeah. The C5, the CE, the CE5 or C5. Yeah. Uh, There's going to be a new model coming out, but yeah. Yeah. And that's actually not bad looking. Like I actually saw a couple of videos. I was actually pretty impressed. Like if you're somebody who's looking for night vision and thermal capability together, you may not be that bad off going that route because I was at, I didn't think it looked bad at all. And if you, if you really want cold, it's not a terrible idea, at least look at it. I would say. I I would say consideration for those products and that kind of novice niche of, of products is, if you are if you fit the bill, then mm-hmm. consider it. If you don't fit the bill, don't even consider it. I, I get that that perhaps the the pricing can be alluring and be like, wow, shit, four grand for binos. Okay, if you're a cop or a SWAT team member, I will never, and I hope everybody else is also not recommending the Jerry Thirty Ones for professional use because it's not its place. It should never be in contention with duty grade products because I don't think it's duty grade. Uh, as is, or, or, or even in the future, I think it's strictly a novice product mm-hmm. and should be marketed and promoted as such. And anything outside of that is probably a big old stretch. Now you'd mentioned earlier, you don't like the optics on the, the Jerry 31. Is that, so that it doesn't limit field of view. Is that correct? It's just, they're not, so good the, they're the, not as good. So the, right. So the, the image tube size itself is, is still the same. It's still an 18 millimeter. Uh, size tube. Uh, the thing about them is the focal openings are, are slightly less aid. They also don't take uh, standardized PVS 14 style optic accessories or anything like that. So it is very limited in. Damn cats. <laughs> yep. uh, it is limited um, to what it can do accessory wise. It is limited to the you know, there is in some models, perhaps some fisheye, perhaps some distortion. You know, I've seen various grades of tubes, some green, some white, some gated, not gated in these systems. Um, there really is kind of a big old mix. Um, I, I think for four grand for the novice person, you're a okay. I think if you're a professional uh, and need something for your duty, for your professional, um, you know, duties, or, or if your life depended on it, I wouldn't be using those products. I'd be using something built to a yeah. higher standard, to a better standard. I um, mean, I think that's perhaps where the conversation in our industry needs to move into. And this idea of instead of coming out and, and banning China, let's actually take a step back and look at, you know, what are these products doing to the American industry? Are they thwarting, you know, efforts of other manufacturers? No, not in my opinion. Um, and if you thought it was, maybe come out with a better product that's cheaper, more affordable. You you know, if you live in America and you want to make America and sell America, then you sh- as an American should know prices on everything have gone up. Nobody's paychecks are going up. So if you want to compete in a space that your products are not intended to compete in, then do something outside of bitching to get into space. I mean... Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's, I mean, there's, I mean, because you get these, these uh, and, and I've seen it tossed around a few groups and stuff like these 3D printed housings, and I, and I'm not talking about like lightweight housings produced by companies like, I know like Nocturne does some height. That's why everyone everyone likes it. It's so lightweight with like the Tonto yeah. um and stuff like that. Oh, was it the the PBS 69 or whatever? Like people can print yeah, the them digital, forever. yeah, the digital one. But but again, look at look at the the space that that is promoted in. Reddit, Discord, novice users. Well, that's where the entire industry is. That's what's probably that's right. Up. Shit, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One one keyboard warrior called me one day and said, Hey, the industry is all this. And I said, Okay, wow. Yeah, wow. my whole life, my whole life's my in turmoil. Life is, a, is a lie. <laughs> Everything. <My life. laughs> 
<laughs> oh goodness. But but no, I I think I think there just needs to be an honest conversation with the consumer, both with the consumer and themselves. Reflect on the market. Look at where it was, because a lot uh -huh. of people are not jumping into night vision today and buying the same day they start. Some people, but a lot of people have been doing a, pro a process, right? Your research, your you're calling vendors, your talking to your friends, looking at reviews and everything else. It's a process and generally a process span upon weeks, yeah. right? So let's look, let's take another step back as a customer and say, what has the industry done in the last couple of weeks? Right. And then Gosh. let's look at that. Let's look at ourselves and let's look at our budget. Am I a professional end user or am I a novice? Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's not to say just because you're a novice, you can't buy into the professional grade products but you perhaps don't need to it goes back to my ROI conversation. Right. But this, the, the, I think we need to just need a nip in the butt, this idea of China sucks, stop supporting China. You know, everybody has to, at the end of the day, still support China. We all shop on Amazon. We all shop on Walmart, target, what have you, the components in some of these systems derive from China. A lot of PVS 14 style optics that are rebranded, as a Singaporean or not Singaporean, they're Chinese rebranded. You can thank the Singapore laws. Um, you know, there's a lot of that. Um, I think at the end of the day, the, the consumer has the ultimate choice, right? But I right. think as an industry, right. we need to better support the consumer in making that choice. And we're not helping them at all by banning these Chinese products. We're not helping them at all by imposing or, or proposing an imposition of 100% tariff. We're not, we're not doing that. But for those people or organizations, entities, whatever you want to call them, who have that mentality, well, then I welcome you to stop selling all this other China shit. Stop selling mm -hmm. your Holosun. Stop selling anything else, your IRA, your infrared. You either take a stand or you're just going to be in the public eye half-assing your stance. That's where we are. That is because the last 15 months of the industry summed up. Because there's really not... I mean, to your point, a lot of the components are foreign made and, and things like that. I mean, and, and truly what, so what, how, like, what is that's on the market today is entirely American made. If we're talking about night vision, I mean, the 1431s Argus, I, I had actually, I used to, originally, I thought it was a Canadian company. Um, <clears throat> so so the op, op four is, so op four night solutions is a, is a Canadian company. Um, okay. so it goes from Argus, which is, uh, the factories in China, and then it moves into, uh, op four night solutions. They completely build completely, you know, redo better the product, um, in a lot of ways, cause it is, could be classified to some degrees as substandard to what most people see these days. Right. So op four does a fantastic job on the 1431 on the APMG of, of going through it, um, and making sure the product you get is a good product. And we have 1431s domestically in professional duty cases. We have 1431s in uh, international partner forces um, with zero, zero fail rate, right? There is no RMA issues. There's no tubes dying. There's no manual gain going out. There's no idea of I shipped a subpar product. I'm going to have all these problems because mm -hmm. nobody... Before everybody stopped with the 1431 on their site, they weren't having these RMA problems, right? You're not having the same RMA problems you had of some of these newer houses on the market, right? You're just not. So, you know, these aren't bad products at the end of the day. You know, we just have to understand that, sure, their source did not originate from the U.S., but neither does PVS-14 optics, neither do semiconductors, neither do chips yeah. in our cars, neither do a lot of things in our life. Well, right. and it's and it's a double standard because people will get all up in a tiff about, you know, you can't buy hollow sun pistol dots or rifle optics and things, right? You can't you can't buy foreign. But this is the same guy sitting there telling you you should buy an aim point. And I, I'm always tickled when people realize like and it's not it's not a dig at aim point, but no, aim point's not American. The yeah, they're they're European. They've had long and people think they're American because they have a long standing history of contracts with the United States military because they do make some very good products. They make some shit products, but they also they make some good products, you know, so it's like, OK, is it again, is it you want American made or you just don't want Chinese made and saying it like DTNBS is right. Acton Black is Dutch, Dutch, something like that. 
Luxembourg. Okay. So again, not American. People regard it in the same category and same uh, like level of social acceptability is, I guess, the term I'll use, well, right? Well, it's- uh, uh, <clears throat> yeah. Well, Acton Black makes professional grade products. They don't make novice products. They don't make True. substandard products, right? But they're, they make professional grade products for partner forces around the world and domestic sales in the United States, right? But they're not made in America. And that's okay, but they make duty built products. And everybody has this idea and this knowledge that it is a duty product. A Jerry 31 is not a duty product. Right. No, so, I mean, this is, you said, you said, honest conversation, really, you know, your needs, your, tra- do you have, if, do you have like a, like a go-to unit or housing, I guess, that you recommend to people when they're, when they're asking, like, because truly, and I think we already said it here, right? There's not a whole lot of like, there's not a whole lot of new that's happening in the night. It's it's how you're making yours a little bit different than the next guys. And maybe it does a little bit better, but then it does something else a little bit worse. Like it's a, it's a give right. and take game largely. Sure. Do you have like a, a housing that you just recommend to people that when they, when they ask, you know, given that for a lot of them, you're really kind of nitpicking, you know, personal preference on some, some small details and things. Well, you know, obviously the PVS 14 is, is a standard, monocular has been and will be for for many years to come mm-hmm. if you're looking for a uh, simplistic but uh, i would still classify the nocturne uh monocular as a purpose-built product right it's streamlined it's dumbed down uh where it should be i think the pvs 14 standardized weighs more than it should i think a lot of people agree yeah. on that All right so uh the guys over there did a great job on on the tanto uh dashio bridge uh, giving people complex uh, solutions uh, in in both 40 field of view and, and a couple of iterations for painting. Uh, so I think that family of product, the Tanto and its Dashio bridges, I'm probably butchering the name, but it's a good, I would classify as a duty grade product. Um, but some other products like the Jerry 31, I would never classify in that. Um, now in the binocular space, I'm still going to support the Argus 1431 regardless that its origin is China, uh, because I'll be the first person in a public, private, or whatever setting to say everybody else, you know, you're a bunch of hypocrites because you're selling China while you're anti-China, while you're getting Singaporean optics that are still Chinese, but then selling just nothing wrong with the 1431. You love it. You got it. Um, yep. Still like great Ryan. with all tubes. Um, feature rich. Um, you know, your IPD, manual gain, ox, man, you know, on board, you got everything. I mean, what more, what more could you want? Right. Besides only, it being made in the U S the only thing that, that it doesn't have. And I had to actually think about this. So I was, uh, the day before Easter, I was at a family gathering and a buddy, um, was asking about looking into buying, you know, a buy no housing. And he's like, Oh, I want one that pans. And I'm like looking around and looking around like, so you really, you just want the RNV, the panning RV or RNVGs, whatever they're called. And he's like, well, is there another one? And I was like, I'm looking and I'm looking and go, no, I don't really think there is like, that's. Well, to, <clears throat> to answer the panning question, you have the AB night vision RPMG, you have the noise fighters um, line of, of panning devices, whether that be uh, the newer metal ones, the older um, uh, printed ones, all good products, the Nocturne uh, Dashio bridges as well. Um, and then obviously, you know, you could just go quads. Yeah. Which, think- hang on, hang on. <laughs> Everybody <laughs> listening is like, well, shit, I don't have 40 grand. You don't need 40 grand because if you're a sensible human, you're like, well, the 1431, all these sellers did sell, which means they got to be okay with Argus, but they stopped. But all these other companies that are still left are selling it because it's proven, it works, people still want it. So the APMBG comes out and it's like, wow, with Elbit 2, 25 grand, 15 grand for Gen 2 and MVT. Wow. Now, I'll caution people again, the Gen 2, I would still say, is a novice product. Yeah. All right. The NMBT, APMBG, Gen 2 at 15 grand is a novice product. Uh, I'm going to buy one and, and build one myself, but I also have lasers and illuminators and extra capabilities that I can add to that to make it okay. Um, the 25 grand Elbit ones, phenomenal price. 
I, I would say that's a duty product. Oh, Even yeah. if it has an Argus housing, I would say it's still a duty product. So is this, do you think, I mean, just from your insider perspective is what I guess I'll say, like, th- does this like, I guess it's a boycott. I don't know. Is this going to, like, do you see long-term, this is going to hurt Argus or is it really kind of like a much do about nothing as far as they're concerned where they're still creating these housings? Like you said, they're used by partner forces. The 1431 housing is, and, and, and really no issues. It's not the, 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 the problems people have with it. If, if it was not foreign made, it would never be a thing because like you said, no right. failure rates, no right. problems with performance. Right. They, they, and on the they, flip side, and on the flip side, you have some U S manufacturers making products that have a higher failure rate that have batch failures that have lot failures that have, you know, one-offs or, or they need firmware or software or, you know, the, the, cut off on the articulation with the read switch didn't work as, as intended, mm-hmm. or, you know, the, the list goes on and on. And on the flip side, you have a product that everybody was selling that you yourself have partner forces around the world have domestic professional end users have and love mind you, they're buying more every day. Trust me. Uh, and they look at this and say, why, why would I spend more if I don't have to, it's not a shit product. I already buy Chinese products through everyday life, right? So I can't just be anti-China and live in America. Just can't. Unless yeah. you're going to be a homeless man on the street or in the woods and, and live off the land, you, you really can't. And it's unfortunate, but that's the world we live in. So to, to try to divest China out of the industry is, is foolish because you're never going to do it. Um, and instead of just saying, hey, I can't compete with this product because of probably price, then mm-hmm. either A, get out of the business, stop competing, stop trying to compete, lower your price, other people have, and are competing it now again, um, or just you know, go up and do your thing. I mean, people is are going to buy what they want to buy. I don't think there, we need to limit what they can. Is there a good competitor to the 1431 in in your opinion like if someone was just like that dead set against it what i mean it i mean it really could be anything you know i mean i think the dtnvs's came down a little bit in price i saw i think um maybe that's a good alternative but But, if if that's still not american made is are the rnvgs in american housing but the design is so old well yeah so the you know ab makes phenomenal products they're they're made in america there, there isn't, and this is night vision almost in a nutshell. There isn't always a one to one, right? Oh, okay. Even even if something's a clone or whatnot, like you can, like if we take the DTMBS to the fourteen thirty one, worlds of difference, right? The DTMBS has auto pod shot off. The fourteen thirty one doesn't. The DTMBS has optional IPD. It's built in on the fourteen thirty one. DTMBS mm-hmm. through a partner can run auxiliary power, it's on board the 1431. Both have manual gain, one's a double A, one's a one, two, three. I mean, so there's some differences to never truly allow a side-by-side apples to apples. You know, some of the same housings in its class that have the same features may not be rotary digital encoders. They may be push button. So that's two trains of thought. Do I want push buttons or do I want a centralized control? like an alpha or a delta or a 1431? Um, or do I want push buttons? Nightline makes a great push button, PVS 14, dual fuel housing. It's a great product, um, but it's push button. Um, you know, there's other push buttons like the ARMVG. It's push button. Do you want that? Do you want a rotary switch? Do you want a digital encoder? What do you want? So, you know, there's always going to be a product that fits somebody's preferences more than somebody else's. Um, I don't always necessarily say you can do an apples to apples because not always you can. Um, it's important at the end of the day to uh, shop within your means. So if your budget is X, shop in X. If it's Y, shop in Y. Understand if you're a novice or professional end user, shop accordingly. Um, ask your resellers or, or manufacturers, what's the warranty? How long you've been around? Um, there's, there's solutions for everybody. You know, there's a, there's a product out there for everybody, but trying to to push some of these products out that just started meeting a void in the industry, 
right, for these novice consumers, I think is foolish. I, I think it's it's just unwarranted and and sorry. That's okay. We're we're still rolling, so I'll just edit out uh the break there, but that's that's funny. It, I always love it when we uh when when I do these episodes and then inevitably there's either like a power failure or internet failure and then it just makes that much I more just, interesting. We went so well and then bam and I was like yeah. what? What? And you, like, <laughs> mid rant, like I'm, I'm on a roll. It's just, you know, and, and to kind of get back to it, you know, it, it's, it, it is weird um, how we as, and it's not even unique really to the night vision industry. It's the, the whole two a space. Everyone's become so anti-China and everything. Again, I get it. I understand at its essence, what we're trying to get to. I just don't think people realize <laughs> People don't realize like how far reaching those implications are, you know, and then in a, because in have, a, yeah, in a lot of cases, you'll have to just go without either that's buy something that does work right. Just because it's made in China doesn't mean it's inherently bad, right? iPhones for a long time were made in China before they moved. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of chip manufacturers are made in China or Taiwan for semiconductors. Um just because it's made in Taiwan, although it's not China, it's, I was just thinking of the analogy this morning. It's like Taiwan is the China that Cuba is to Florida. <laughs> it's, it's not a bad way to put it. That's no, not bad I mean, it. and if you, if you kind of dumb it down, cause it's a really dumbed down uh, yeah. analogy, if you dumb it down, okay. It makes a lot of sense. Taiwan is almost inherently an extension of China. It's Taiwan. It's not China. But, you know, going into global politics, look at what the, the Pentagon and the White House came out recently and said, we're, we're not, we're really not supporting Ta- Taiwanese independence. We're really just okay with the status quo. Nobody kill anybody. Go on with what you're doing. Stop asking us to do something about it. Again, another dumbed down explanation. But, you know, if, if we're not doing anything, then why does anybody need to do anything? You know, yeah. and, and if something needs to be done, don't do it the way it's being done. The the way the way this is being handled is is more or less, you know, in a lot of people's opinions, not just my own. It's more or less I can't sell a product to compete against this. So let me do everything I can in my power to derogatory, you know, this company or these people. So basically outs them and say, hey, look up, wake up world. Uh, you shouldn't be supporting them. And here's why. But on the flip side, there's a whole list of reasons why, if people wanted to look, why these companies calling out China, maybe perhaps yeah. themselves are hypocrites or shouldn't be supported. That's well, all I'm saying. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of because there is still a lot of support behind the hollow suns, especially if we're talking in the, the night vision realm behind the laser units. Because yep. truthfully, mm-hmm. on the civilian side of lasers here, I mean, we saw the death of the at pile, which a lot of people will say is not that great of a unit to begin with. But it was kind of the like legacy unit for a while. That's gone, right? Um, we have the D-ball, D2, and uh, the A3, which are good in some regards, not not great in others and things, right? Um, and that's kind i mean unless you unless you can afford them all which some people can and that's that's sweet or the raid whatever version of the raid that's civilian right but again well there's there's there, the the mall is a great product um you know although at us night vision we don't sell be myers i'm still a very big proponent um if you have what the industry has now kind of earmarked mall money quote unquote mall money mm-hmm. um which is that 3500 to the 4000 so mall money is is really mall raid you know, and guy, what, whatever kind of you money. Can get that goal. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, maybe not through official channels. I see all these gray market and gals and pecs and they're brand new. And it's like, wow, that's, uh, you know, L3 says on a PO, it's not necessarily a PO if you're selling on a Facebook group to anybody, but that's another, that's another yeah, conversation. Yeah. But I mean, and everyone's fine with the hollow sun lasers because it's just the best we can get as civilians. I mean, uh, you know, the Iris, is there they, they teased it at shot show and by all accounts it seems to be a great solution i don't know that 
I don't know too many companies that aren't going to want to try and get a piece of that market share, given that it's, if it is as advertised, which it's not released. So far, yet, it's, so not. Know, so far yeah. it's not. Right? Um, you know, but like if it does perform that well at the $900 like price point that they're talking about, I don't know that retailers are going to be, you know, uh, against selling it in a, yeah, I mean, really in, in society. Yeah. And as consumers, you know, really as American civilians, right. Who want, or I would even go as far as say is that we need a, sure. a capable laser unit, right? Like, our options are fairly limited. And one of the things I did want to ask about is because I know US Night Vision has the uh the designate DR, series of lasers. The desig yeah. Oh sorry. <laughs> and I know it's a newer offering to the market. Is that I mean, truthfully, now is that is that a completely American made laser? I've seen some like rave reviews about the performance. Um yeah. and I've also I I mean I haven't dug into it a lot. I've had some people tell me they really like it. I've had some people tell me it's more than they needed. Um, but we really just don't have a lot of options for civilians. Right. So, um, you know, what a lot of people, so the short answer is yes, it is, is it, it is made in America. Um, but as a lot of people in tune with the industry know, you know, V cell diodes are not made in America. Right. So some of these laser technology components are just not made in America may not be made in China, may be made in partner, you know, locations, but they're not American derived. They're imported to be put into American systems. Um, a lot of V cells are, or actually all V cells are basically that right outside of, you know, components of that nature, which any V cell will have. Yes. Made in America, made in Washington, uh, by three EIR, uh, Arasaka, uh, and us at us night vision. We distribute it uh, It's a whole family of products. You know, the DIRV is two grand, um, air socket button, air socket clamp, V cell illuminator, Viz green laser, IR pointer. I mean, you, you have your options. Does it have a, a a window screen for round counts? No. Does it have, you know, a crane plug port? Yes. Is it one of the lowest sitting lasers on the market? Yes. Um, does it slap a lot of other lasers around? Yes. Um, does it have a warranty that is backed up? Yes. Actually, two years. Um, so some laser manufacturers, um, I, I think we all know about, you know, the prolapsing Steiner plugs. Um, good yes. luck getting that fixed. Um, I've heard horror stories he, about that. Mine has been fine. Thank I'm going to yeah. knock on some wood here. But uh, like I, I've heard horror, absolute horror stories. And then that the customer service window is like months to get it repaired. Yep. Uh, you, you have people raving about uh, our warranty. Should they need it? People rave about B.E. Myers warranty. Um, you know, so there's definitely good products out there with fabulous warranties, customer support teams, um, set up to support you from your entire pre-purchase to purchase to post-purchase. And I think that's also important. It's not just support on the front end, it's support on the back end, um, which goes back and ties into our, ask your, your vendor's warranty question. How long have you been in business? Mm -hmm. Whose lifetime is, is, is it my lifetime? Is it my dog's lifetime? You know, as, as dumb as it, it sounds to ask, it's like, well, shit, what is a lifetime warranty? Yeah. I mean, how do you measure it? How do you, you have to define it somehow. It can't be well, completely well, open. -ended. I mean, that's just bad business. Well, yeah, because, you know, to me, if I, if I read, uh, especially here's the funny one, a lifetime warranty, no questions asked. There's got to be a catch because if there's not, okay, well, why can't anybody just, Purely hypothetical for all the listeners. Group of 10 people buy 10 houses and you just keep breaking them. A lifetime warranty, no questions asked, means you know I broke it, but on this page right here that says no questions asked, you can't question why I broke it, but you got to replace it. Yeah. How long can a business sustain that? Mm, yeah. It's and 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 that's we've we've experienced that and witnessed it in the in the community with other companies uh in other spaces right where it's right. hey listen we can we can we'll we'll work with you we'll give you a discount you know but but to your point especially if you're starting up in in a space that is dominated by some very large names you know whether and that could be you know it could be armor it could be optics it could be whatever we kind of eat our own in that way because we're very critical 
because this new company can't immediately stack up and measure up to a legacy manufacturer that has the resources and the money, mostly the money, uh, you know, to, to do those things. And it's like, well, were you being reasonable? Like, did you, I don't know, did you huck this rifle and optic off a cliff trying to break it and then get pissed because we wouldn't, to your point, right? No questions asked, warranty it? Like, I, I, I would say, you know, I would say that maybe <laughs> we need to be a little bit smarter about how we evaluate those things, but then also have a better understanding, read some of the fine print, understand what, what you're signing up for when you make that purchase or, or, or more importantly, what you think you're signing up for, but perhaps aren't. And again, I'm not saying yeah. anybody is, anybody is, is misleading their warranties or anything like that. I'm not saying, I'm just no, saying, no, no. ask the question to your vendor. Right. If you're in the market, ask. We're very transparent. We have a two year warranty because Elbit gives us a two year warranty on the tubes. Anything else outside of two years, which is the standard for two manufacturers, warranty one or two years, is truly on the vendor themselves to replace the tubes at their cost. Um, now, housings, housings can vary between you know one and five years um, or, or lifetime. Right. I mean, you know. You just open a can of worms of you know the housings themselves can can span forever it seems like um now we all die uh so i don't know how that one's gonna last <laughs> um, yeah that but, raises more questions you know just you know the real thing is there's a lot of stuff a lot of changes in the space you know consumers need to be more critical of manufacturers Hold well and just take some of that response take some of that responsibility on as a consumer, like read some of the fine print, do some research. Don't just, and I said this earlier, don't just go off of one person's recommendation. Oh, go buy from this night vision company and get this specific housing because I had a great experience. Maybe you did. What's to say that the net your buddy's purchase may not be that one out of a thousand that has a QC issue that popped up and not, you, you know what I mean? Like it's just do your research, make sure you understand that's, we are, I think, as a society as a whole, right, very conditioned to to blame everybody else for whatever issue we come across Correct. Yep. and and take as little, it's, it's somebody else's fault. It's always somebody else's fault. No, I didn't read it. I agreed to it. You know, like I'm, I'm going through the process of trying to switch jobs right now, and I just had to modify my agreement to leave because I accepted an HR policy saying that I needed to give a full two weeks notice. I glossed over that, but I agreed to it. So I have to adhere to it or then therefore suffer the consequences. Okay. Like that, that is how the world works. We are, we are adults. We have to do adult things and make adult decisions. And if you can make it work out, cool. If you can't, you, you know, tough rocks. I, I don't know what to tell you, but take some responsibility and, for it. And and I think the important note is, is, is nobody saying don't buy from X, Y, and Z or, or, or this organization or that. Absolutely. I think not. everybody, yeah. I think everybody's just saying, it's important to put more emphasis than you're currently doing on information you're disseminating based on these websites, right? Yeah. Take it, take a deeper dive. What is this warranty? What is your stance on, on China? If, if you're so anti-China, but doing X, Y, and Z, it's still supporting China. Where, where, where are you as a business or a person grounded? Cause you can't have both. You can't sign a document that says hundred percent tariff and anti-China housing, CMOS and thermal, and then sell Chinese housing, CMOS, and thermal. Yeah. <laughs> it just, no, I mean, just have an understanding of really, who we, Yeah. Because we put a large amount of value in this community. We put a large amount of value on, and you say it all the time, right? Support good companies, good dudes doing good shit. And it's like, yeah, no, I mean, 100%. And there's like, hundreds of those people and organizations out there. Hundreds. Hundreds yeah. more than people even realize. But understand when you say they're good dudes doing good shit, like, what does that mean? Do you, do you care for one? Like that, that would be my first question as a consumer. Do you really care? Like, do do you really, are you just trying to get some night vision? That's going to be good for you at a good price. And if it's that simple, then like, dude, God bless, like go get your night vision, have a blast. Like, fuck yeah. But if, and here's the funny thing too, is a lot of these guys, this is, and I, let me just say like we, as a podcast, custom night vision is a, is a supporter of ours. They're great. I got free night vision. Shout, shout out to Ben and Kevin. <laughs> no, no, Ben and Kevin Good are friends great. of mine. Yep. I got I got free night vision is because they're a sponsor. Um, <clears throat> there's business dealings that tied to that. Obviously, I don't like to lord around the fact that I have 
binos to all my friends or anything or like that I have, you know what I mean? But here's the thing. A lot of these people are out here virtue signaling for not buying Chinese and like posting in these night vision groups that, hey, should I look at the 1431s or the Jerry's or whatever? And you just get these blanket responses from assholes that are like, they're Chinese junk. Go buy something good. A lot of those people don't even have night vision. They don't even have. Oh, no. And 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 again, this is this is not nothing derogatory against people's you know income situations, but a lot of to your point, a lot of those people don't have, aren't planning to have, or will never have the funds to buy night vision. But somehow they can be keyboard warriors and say, "Don't buy this, buy that." Never probably use night vision, or if you have, your experiences is, is very few and far between. Um, but people take their word as gospel. Well, you know what it reminds me of is is it's like if like I have a, a buddy and his family, they own several auto dealerships. So they're very wealthy. They do very well for themselves. They've worked very hard. I, I can't I can't like over they they have worked very hard to get where they're at as a family. All of them, they all work like 60 plus hours. But I have never encountered in my life more they get more people going, Hey, you know what you should do for a business endeavor? You should do this. Hey, you know what you should do? That, that that's a, that's a winning idea right there. Hey, you should invest in this because that's going to make you money. And it's like, Oh, well shit, I should listen to you because clearly you have all the money in the world and I have no idea what I'm doing trying to make money. And right. I, that, that might be an oversimplification of a scenario, but it's always the people that don't have it that are telling everybody else how to get it. And it's, it's the same here. Like, you know, I, I think that the the truly, the truly educated folks in the community, right, will say a lot of the same things that you've been saying, like get duty rated if you want duty rated. If you want recreational use, save yourself some money, go have a blast, right. just yeah. understand the limitations. Exactly. Be right. Because yeah. because there are there are limitations. But for the novice person, go for it. You have my vision. Really, are you really going to be in the situation where it's going to matter? Right. Probably not. You know, right. I mean, is or or any of us going to be? Let's more or less probably not. I don't know, man. That that, uh, that Civil War movie that was pretty some pretty compelling stuff. You know, I'm going to go see it this week. <laughs> it's on my list. I've seen a lot of the trailers. I really want to go see it. It looks it looks cool um, or at the very least eye opening. And I think that's where a lot of people are going to start to try and draw justification. Hopefully it's not a thing, but, um, but, yeah, but so even, I, I think even if they real quick, even if they do draw justification, we're still at an economical deficit in consumer spending, right. In, yeah. in, in, in extra curriculars as I, as I call them. Right. So, you know, night vision is not a need for most. It's a want, right. Mm-hmm. You need fam. You need food on the table for your family, so you're not likely to forego food for night vision. The joke is always ramen and this, but ramen's still food, guys. I mean, it does cost money. <laughs> I would, I would seriously hope that you, you know, and for people listening, or if you have friends like, like, I, I really hope that you are not foregoing your family's quality of life for the uh, pipe dream of American Revolution. Like I, I, I'll just say it that way because you know, you owe it to your wife, you owe it to your kids, you owe it to your dogs and or cats, right? right? To give them a decent quality of life. And like, if you can't afford night vision, then do something about it. Go get a better job, get a second job if you really want to. Sell some right. stuff. You know, get creative. Start a side hustle. What I mean, what, there's a lot of ways you can address it. Um, I, I really, I, and I've been that way about this. The tactical space since day one is like. It, it it's it's funny to joke about it, right? Um, and right. there's a great the buy once, cry once. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and there's a great skit um, that uh, Jim Rome did. Uh, you know, Rome is burning ESPN guy uh, years ago called Softball Guy. You know, he's this guy. You know, um, and totally made up, but like, oh, he believes, and we all have that friend. Like, oh, he believes if his high school coach didn't hate him, he'd have gone in the MLB draft. You know, and. And, and, you know, all these like stereotypical things, but then he goes on to talk about how his wife and kids eat hot dogs and ramen every night so that he can buy like the, you know, $1,700 softball bat and and all this crazy stuff. And I go back and listen to it and I hear people in this community and they're, they like, they, they trumpet that they're like, yeah, yeah. We just cut back on non-essentials. I'm like, are you cutting back on non-essentials or are you fucking making your family miserable so that you can have 
toys. Right. Well, yeah. I mean, that's, I think each individual person may need to answer that for themselves. Um, yeah, it's very and, individual. And, and, and right. Everybody's income's different. Everybody's needs versus wants are different. Um, and, and some people are single, you know, when I first got night vision, I, I've said this many times publicly, privately, et cetera. I find, I bought my night vision years and years ago from TMVC or pair of Sentinels. Um, I financed them. I was, 18 working 70 80 hours a week paid off a loan in no time you know it made sense mm-hmm. right and, and for some people in situations like that where where you're 18 living at home have no expenses working your life away by all means you have all the income in the world to do whatever the hell you want welcome to america god bless it um yeah. on the flip side when you grow up and have a family or have responsibilities and bills etc um a lot changes. So don't think that you have this same expenditure income that you used to have or that you think you want to have. Take a reality check. Can you, can you afford it? Yeah. I mean, and it's not to say that you shouldn't go out and, you know, and buy night vision. I'm not saying that. Right. I'm not saying that you can't cut some things out to save money to set aside for night vision. Absolutely. I mean, like God knows, I, like I pay for like every subscription service for TV under the sun, and I could probably save myself an easy forty bucks a month by just not. But you, you know, I, I just you have to have some like some priorities. Quality of life too. You don't 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 decrease your quality of life or or your your common expectation of life, right? And that could yeah. be a Netflix subscription. That could be a Starbucks coffee in the morning. Right. These five or ten dollars, some people will say, hey, you know, long term, that could make a difference. Well, absolutely. You know, I I probably spend three or four grand at Starbucks a year. That's a shit ton of money. Right. Supporting supporting that company. But I'm not going to trade my five dollar coffee five days a week just to save three grand. Right. It just you know, we're not. Yeah. Three grand at the end of the year is a lot for anybody. But I'm not going to see that unless I inevitably put that same five dollars into a bin every day you see what i'm saying like yeah what well and that's also do is, that's also just the cost of like a pvs 14 you know because right. people will say well it's just easy just don't get your starbucks and not everybody gets starbucks every day if you are that person then cool but yep. keep in mind that's you're sacrificing that and it is kind of the way dieting works too my wife talks about all the time but like make sustainable changes stuff you're going to be able to go without you are going to cut that out of your life for 12 months, a whole year to get you to that three or $4,000 point and maybe get you the PVS 14 if prices continue to go up, right? Maybe right. <laughs> get that PVS 14 that you want. And is it really a PVS 14 or do you really want some DTNVSs? Do you really want some RNVGs? I mean, whatever, pick your flavor, right? right? So at that point, are you really just cutting out that morning coffee or like how deep does that cut really go? And then the the conversation changes. It's a very nice and very convenient talking point on Instagram and on YouTube and things where you don't have anybody talking back to to challenge it and say, yeah, but wait, what about this or it's, that or life? <laughs> I mean, there's night vision, you know, the, the 1431s I have, I think when I got them, they were, you know, valued around the $7,000 price range, something like that. Up until I got my current vehicle, which is a lease, I've never even owned a car that costs that much. Right. It's like, you know, I put that in perspective for people and it's like, yeah, it, it, there is still, it's very accessible, but there's a level of, you know, unobtainium there. And all of a sudden, when you put it in that perspective, yes, something like this Jerry 14, maybe, you know, maybe this isn't such, it's not like it, it's not like it only lets you see in the dark, but you can't use a laser with it because it just lacks whatever, you know, function. There, There is, sure. there's something to be said for the capability Again, just understand the limitations, understand what you're and, getting. And and I think and I think perhaps what, what it's best suited for, which is the novice consumer. And and there is a lot more novice consumers today than there were four or five years ago. Right. And yeah. and I think also that that is due in part to psionics. I mean, look at the look at how far they've come with the Aurora series, the black mm-hmm. pros, et cetera, now to the Ospin, which is that, you know, two grand, twenty five hundred ish. Um, depending on the sale price point. So that's not targeting in its current iteration professional users, right? I mean, there's they do make, Tonish makes great maritime models and some other models um, purpose-built for various things, but there are more 
entries into this novice, non-professional space that I think a lot of consumers need to just realize that perhaps maybe you are a novice, right? Or, yeah. or define if you are not. Don't don't go into this saying, you know, I want night vision. Let me just look at all the options. Well, if money's not an object, look at duty versus novice. You know, just because you have unlimited funds doesn't mean you need to spend unlimited funds, right? Maybe the Jerry 31 is is your flavor, right? Maybe that's the ice cream yeah. you want. Maybe it really uh, is. Because maybe, enough. maybe that's all you're going to need, right? Yeah. But a cop using this in SWAT or SRT or, or search and rescue, hell no. Not no, but hell no, right? It's there a duty right tool products. for the right job, yeah. Right, exactly. I mean, you're not you're not going to take... You're not going to take a, a Toyota Camry and and go, I don't know, go out with a, a four by four Bronco and expect to not get stuck. You know what I mean? And not with that attitude. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not yeah. talking the TR. I'm not talking the TRD Toyota either. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's it, it's it's uh, it's a um, it, to me it's more it's a perspective issue. Like you just exactly. need people need some clarity. They need the appropriate perspective and, you know, just like we've been saying this entire time, you know, have the honest conversation, realize what problem you're trying to solve and that the, the best solution is not always the flashiest one or what people, I mean, it's great. And everyone envisions their first car to be, you know, a Corvette or a loaded F-150 and your first car is a piece of shit Buick LeSabre. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, but it works, but, but, gets you where you need to go. And you don't have issues yeah, with it, yeah. and it's safe. Like, it, yeah, but it, it, again, a, a car serves its purpose. It gets you to point A and B. You know, yeah. I, I, I'm the most guilty of this. I'm like, oh, I want a flashy car and everything else, and I'm like, I don't, I don't want a eighty thousand dollar car anymore. I don't even want yeah. a fifty thousand. You know what I mean? I, you're a lot of people, especially me. I'm realizing, and some friends in, in my age group, I'm realizing we did it wrong. We got the most expensive, flashiest thing we could to probably perhaps fit in to the culture. A lot of mm-hmm. social media was up bringing at that time more prolific than it was uh, prior to that anyways. But we kind of perhaps maybe got into, I wouldn't say the best financial choices it may not be the worst. Right. But, you know, as we get older, we make better choices. Um, yeah. And as night vision gets older, I think it's important to realize there's going to be more and more choices, some better, some worse. Um, but still, there's choices, and ask ask the people selling it, ask the people making it, have them be transparent, um, do more diligence, right? Ask more questions, ask about the warranty, ask about perhaps the origin, ask about, you know, what is your stance on, on everything in the industry? You know, are you, do you care? Do you not care? Um, and I think a lot of people kind of have the, this idea of, you know, I care to a point, right? Like, I, I don't right, yeah. I don't want to support them, but it, evidently I know I'm currently doing that anyways. Um, so what's what difference does this one make? You know what I mean? I think that's a yeah. lot more sensible approach is, you know, a lot of people are realizing, at least people we're talking to is, you know, the sensible approach is I'm already using China. Right. It's it's mm-hmm. inevitable. You know, I may not want to. I may not want to promote it, um, but it's a fact of life. Um, so moving into other segments whether it be night vision or thermal or anything else uh, it's just a part of life and and i think it's here to stay it's been here to stay um it's not going anywhere i I don't see uh 100 tariff ever happening that's unfathomable joke you know comical at best um Mm -hmm. but you know we have choices and and i think at the end of the day just ask these ask more questions no 100 percent and uh, I mean, it's all good stuff, you know, um, but man, I, I appreciate you making the time to, to jump on and, and get into all of this. Cause it, it really, when we say that things changed from 15 months ago, the last time we had a, the opportunity to sit down, it's, it's a vastly different market. Um, so I, I appreciate it, man. Uh, it, it's always great being able to kind of pick your brain on this stuff. Cause I just don't know. <laughs> Tr- truly. I just don't know. That's the, all good. I, yeah. Um, I love being here. No, man, it's, it's absolutely outstanding. Um, if people want to contact you, where, I mean, where can they reach out and connect with you if they have questions? Yeah. Or anything? So 
you know, usnightvision.com. Uh, I'm on our live chat. Um, you can email sales. Uh, for any listeners, you can use code PMP uh, for 3% off site-wide. Uh, Argus 1431s and Argus Panos included, um, which if you're looking at the NMBT ones, it's about 450 bucks off you can save. Um, just throwing that <clears throat> out there. <laughs> 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 if you want the same housing that's proven that Austin has, there's no better choice than the 1431. Yeah, I, I've, I've had an absolutely outstanding experience with mine. Um, no problems, no complaints. Any issues were 110% user uh, error, like not adjusting my gain correctly or f- forgetting how to turn on my illuminator, you know, just <laughs> completely. We were out like my buddy Josh was like, do you have an illuminator on that? I go, I don't think this model has one. And then I watched a video. I think Kevin from custom did it. I mean, it, maybe it was you. I don't know. It's like, yeah, you just double tap the button to turn on the yep. illuminator. I'm like, shit. <laughs> immediately messaged I'm like hey remember Saturday when I said I didn't have one of those um I actually do I'm just I'm just a fucking idiot so <clears throat> did, did you know you have programming mode too uh, I did not <laughs> okay so quick quick question for all <laughs> listeners and you uh, yeah. five taps on the 1431 will engage or disengage the stow uh, feature so when you stow it auto on auto off will either uh, turn on or off depending on your current setting they ship right. with it on but yeah, if you yeah. want to turn it off five taps, you'll see some flashes of the light pipe. And then when you stow it, it'll stay on or off, depending on what setting you're already in. Oh, I see. I like it when I, when I flip it up and, and I can turn it off. So that's that's a plus for me. But I know some people are just, they want it on until they turn it off. So All Right. So, you know, another extra feature, a little snippet for everybody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks, man. Uh, I appreciate it awesome. as always. And uh, we'll we'll definitely be in touch. Hopefully do it again sooner than 15 months we'll see what the industry does right (laughs) right right so a slight hiccup there with the audio uh we're able to pull everything back together and it's always you know it's all in good fun it's always a a, a unpredictable endeavor uh when we're connecting literally from one side of the country to the other but was super thrilled to be able to sit down and and talk with duncan and I'm sure that that discussion probably uh, ruffles some feathers, maybe, and maybe some people are upset by it. I I understand both sides of the discussion, but I really do my my alignment with the whole discussion, and I believe at the core of it, so does Duncan's, is that we want to see more American citizens better prepared and more capable, and that's really what the core of the matter is. Um, when you reduce it down to its simplest elements and you know, there's, there's a lot that goes with it. You know, unfortunately these are, these are complicated times and it's a complicated world that we live in. And as much as I think as we would, we would love for things to be uh, very black and white and very easily discernible between, you know, like I said, black and white, right or wrong, left or right. Um, it's just not always, it's just not always that easy, you know, and the older I get, honestly, and I'm not that old, but the older I get, the more I see that. And not that I want to necessarily necessarily say that compromise is the way on everything, because it truly isn't on everything. But I do think that if you had to prioritize things like your own capability and what you can do to defend yourself and your family and, and things like that, you know, you have to be measured in the approach that you take. And I think, again, to kind of, if we were to, to simplify and distill our discussion here, and we touched on a, a ton, right? That's the the brilliant part about having Duncan on is that he has so much insight and knowledge and has spent so much time in the industry and has seen and and observed, right? So many developments and so many different changes and trends in the industry and things. So I really, I value his, uh, his opinion and his insight a lot. I really do. Um, and I hope that you guys were able to walk away with some, at the very least, right? <clears throat> uh, some new perspective, uh, some some different thoughts. Maybe you feel more, you know, you feel more strongly on one one side or the other, or maybe less. Um, that's I think really what a good discussion and a good podcast will do is to maybe jar you in one way or the other. Um, and 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 this certainly could be one of those discussions. It definitely definitely could be. Um, and I encourage you guys if you are still looking into buying night vision, take advantage of the discount code. PMP for 3% off at US Night Vision. Um, 
They're not a sponsor here. We also recommend you guys go check out everything great at Custom Night Vision. Both are terrific companies. Make the decision that makes more the most sense for you, you know, 100%. Um, and I, I hope you guys did, you know, walk away with something positive from this. Um, I hope you guys did have a good experience with this discussion because there is a lot to be said about um, companies and industry trends and things like that. I think in, in the 2A space, we're very quick to dismiss certain behaviors purely because of the names and faces that may be behind some of them. And it's just very disingenuous to me. I think that if we were more honest with ourselves about how we make our decisions and what we really think and feel, I think we, we would admit that we are driven out of one, out of, out of a formed opinion which is con- which consists of somebody else's opinion primarily, um, but then also out of this odd fear we have societally of not wanting to, I guess, go against the grain, or or to be this uh, this person who you know we don't want to be perceived as doing the wrong thing, even if the ones who are perceiving us have no right to be judgmental. Um, we're very fickle in our community that way, and and obviously I'm not going to change that. Not that I wouldn't. It's just that my podcast and my voice only go so far, and I don't believe that there's, you know, just tell it like it is. I don't think there's enough people out there that care what I have to say for me to be impactful. But I do want to bring these discussions forward, right? I do want to see the, these discussions being had, and, you know, maybe it, it begs to question why. You know, I think that's very important, and maybe it changes nothing. Um, maybe it changes something. Maybe it leads to change of everything. I, I don't know. You know what I mean? Um, in the, in the grand scheme of things, we're just talking about night vision here, guys. Like this isn't, <clears throat> this isn't like the, the country's mortgage market or the economy. I mean, we're, it's night vision, you know? So we're trying, let's try not to overthink it too much. And you know, let's try not to get caught, get too caught up in, in our own dramatics and the smell of our own farts. You know what I mean? Um, just, you know, and that's, that's kind of where I'm at is, is just enjoy it for what it is. Night vision's amazing. I'm, I'm so blessed and so fortunate that I get to partner with companies that give me that capability, um, and then support this podcast, which in turn, I can bring this kind of discussion and things to all of you, uh, because I find that to be valuable. I think that that's great. I think it's outstanding. And, um, that's what we're here for is to share these discussions and, and these learning opportunities and things to share that all with you. I don't want to ever be the guy that tells you guys, you know, you have to think this way. You have to feel that way. Um, or at least I, I I won't say never because I'm not perfect, but I will say I will do my best to try not to, uh, put you as a listener, um, in that position because that's not basically the principle that we were founded on here at, at, at prepared mindset. Uh, but at any rate, so like I said, fantastic discussion. Uh, Duncan's a great guy. I, I highly recommend you guys reach out to him if you have questions because uh, he's like he's he knows a lot. He's seen a lot. He's done a lot. Um, really, really cool dude if you guys haven't had the opportunity to connect with him and, and converse with him. Um, but that's all I got for you guys this week. Uh, you know, things are shaking up over here on my end. So next couple weeks here will be really, really interesting um, as I continue to keep things moving with our same regularly scheduled weekly programming. Um you know, try to try to keep things uh, on the track, as as they say. Uh, but until next time, everybody, thanks for checking in. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. We appreciate you guys and all of your support. Stay safe out there. And like we always say here, work hard, train smarter, and be prepared. <laughs> <laughs>